Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the conference room for the concluding session of our today's meeting. Uh, so, um, first of all, I, 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 I would like to welcome uh, Johannes Hahn, the member of the European Commission, responsible among any, uh, uh, many other things chiefly uh, for the EU enlargement and relations with the neighbourhood. Uh, and speaking among many other issues, because the European Commission is the collective decision-making body, so each of the members has to cast his vote on all EU policies being decided in Brussels. So, but uh, before giving floor uh, for, um, for a Commissioner Hahn for a for, for the address, I would like to make a short summary of those discussions that we had earlier today. Uh, I would like, I mean, as a part of the legal disclaimer, I, I, I should say that we would have a, a kind of the more formalized conclusions by the chair prepared later on. Um, by the team consisting of, of, of Latin Presidency, the External Action Service, and the European Commission. So we, we had people in, in, in this room who duly took notes of, of each and every uh, comment and, and, and proposal. So we will try to do a kind of the synthesis and uh, later on distribute to uh, publicly, but also to, to all participants. So, Chair's summary. Um, I think it clearly came out of today's discussions uh, that free and reliable media is inevitable for implementing the goals of the Eastern Partnership, and not only. Without an adequate understanding um, the partnership, as we know it now, um, risks to obtain an image of a project imposed from above or, which even worse, to be misinterpreted by those having turned down our offer of cooperation. This substantiates a need for a closer engagement of EU with partner countries on the issues of media freedom and development of the media landscape. It was recalled on several occasions today that EU and almost all of the partnership region is covered by the same freedom of expression standards. Whether they are followed, that's another issue. Those set by the Council of Europe on the basis of the EHRC Therefore, those partners sincerely aspiring closer relations with the European Union need, as a first thing, to adhere to the above standards. Another thing which we, we, we uh, actually uh, analyzed early on, and that was the diminishing public confidence in media and trust in media in general. Speakers highlighted the risks that the weakened media landscape brings with it. First, there is no real fight against corruption, no real democratic oversight and control. All in all, no good governance in the country. Second, a weak domestic media means also an ex exposure to misinformation from abroad, aiming at confusing the audience and disseminate mistrust to legitimate authorities of the country. We can conclude from discussions that media maturity is closely related to the state building process and it attempts to undermine the European oriented process and that attempts to undermine the, uh, the European-oriented state building are mostly found in the globalized information space. This explains why the EU-funded media assistance 
as mentioned by the representative of the Commission, deserves a special place within assistance efforts as defined in European Neighbourhood Instrument. On the other hand, governments should realise that controlled media is a weak media. Therefore, they should take care of media resilience rather than attempt to control them. Moreover, uh, when speaking about the unleash of, 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 of propaganda uh, in the Eastern Partnership area, propaganda instigated by, by the third party, uh, one of conclusions was that the best weapon against propaganda is not the counter-propaganda, but um, professional journalists and professional media. And moreover, only own created content, or let's say mostly the, the, the uh, own re related uh, own created content, uh, is really effective against uh, this uh, propaganda. Against this backdrop, a need for more ambitious media support in the Eastern Partnership region was frequently brought up. Uh, as most immediate steps in that direction where EU could use all the existing instruments at its disposal could be following. First and foremost, the monitoring of media situation is essential. Uh, to tackle the problem, first of all, we must understand it. The successful project of, amongst others, of the Eastern Partnership Media Freedom Landscape helped largely to prepare this very, this very conference. Um, the monitoring should be continuing to steer the political guidance and assistance efforts. Then, it is a direct interest of both European Union and partners to continue with journalist training and notably to make it more effective uh, by approaching in terms of training, training um, also public broadcasters and uh, media outlets with wider outreach. Quality journalism products and correct and understandable messages about the EU, amongst others, then would reach a wider audience. A group of journalists whose working language is Russian should be covered by our training programs. As was mentioned by the representative of the Commission, with a certain degree of satisfaction we can look back at and ascertain that I think that up to 750 that was mentioned journalists in Eastern Partnership countries have received training under EU-funded programs so far. And indeed, to maximize benefits of this investment already made, it would be commendable that these journalists form a network in a view to tap their collective wisdom. They would be undoubtedly willing to contribute in a quality way to the ongoing debate about the partnership goals, benefits, or hardships indeed, of the process of getting closer to EU on other related issues, but also about how to tackle uh, hostile propaganda, amongst other issues. Then, support to journalist professional organizations, who are key actor for expected positive change in media integrity and conditions for free expression in media. This should become priority. We should invest in their capacity to become the interlocutors for the authorities in a policy dialogue when professional matters of media or of free expression in general are at stake. As it was underlined very often today, we are witnessing an unprecedented drop in the professional and quality standards in journalism, and actually not only in the partnership countries, but in the union itself. To this end, the journalist professional organizations are the first actor and ally to defend the values of the profession. They should form a basis for 
putting in place a respected self-regulation, either in form of press councils or press ombudsmen or any similar institution, who should be able to prevent kind of the tabloidization, should I call it that way, tendencies in media, defend ethical norms in journalism and professional standards. Moreover, in the times of the citizen journalism, widespread use of social media and in the view to protect the value of the profession, journalist associations and unions are the first allied to support media literacy programs aiming at promoting critical thinking of audience. Of course, on top of that, uh, similar media literacy programs as a part of school curricula would be most welcome, at least in those countries where governments are willing to introduce it. Another uh, closely related issue, this is uh, the exchange, what was mentioned, the exchange of content between, should I say, um, um, like-minded media outlets. Uh, this is another low-cost solution uh, with a great effect across the region and also uh, between the region and the European Union. An open dialogue between the authorities and media community represented by professional organizations is essential. Even in countries where authorities are not so keen to listen, a dialogue is the only way to tackle media-related issues. Eventually, it's in the ultimate interest of the authorities themselves. The concerns regarding those risks stemming from propaganda pressures were strongly present in today's discussion. This was clearly stated that the way to mitigate these risks was to offer alternative source of information, analysis and entertainment, last but not least, uh, to our citizens who feel close to receiving it in the Russian language. To this end, we are looking forward to the final results of the feasibility study by the European Endowment of Democracy in order to have further result-oriented discussion on this subject. In the countries of Eastern Partnership, television remains, and with a big distance, the main source of information. In this context, uh, the regulation setting up the broadcasting sector, supervisors or regulators, their independence and duties is of utmost importance. We should look into possibilities offered by the EU cooperation with the Council of Europe to offer the legal advice to our partners as well as to assist in establishing a credible track record of these regulators. Of course, as I mentioned in introduction, not all the topics relevant to media development were covered by discussions at equal or sufficient degree. So aren't they equally present in my summary? In this regard, further events covering subjects like role of public service in broadcasting and media, in general, also in Russian language, the delayed digitalization process of the terrestrial broadcasting in Eastern Partnership countries, development of social media, and its impact on the development of democracy, etc., are perfectly legitimate for a discussion in this format. So I can only express my uh, sincere wish that uh, this first media conference is not the last, and that following presidencies in their preparation for further Eastern Partnership events will take up this initiative and carry it on. Um, with this conclusion, I would like to give floor now to Commissioner 
Han uh, for his address to participants. Thank you very much, uh, State Secretary, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, it was uh, very interesting to listen to the summary, and I will address many of these uh, issues also in, my, in, in, in the next uh, few couple of minutes. But I would also like um, to use the opportunity to thank the Latvian presidency for having organized uh, this uh, first uh, Eastern Partnership media conference. Uh, I think in, at the margin of the Riga summit, and I think it was a, a great idea to do this. And the interest and also the, the outcome uh, in terms of substance has shown and proved how important it is to come together and uh, to use also such an event uh, for having an exchange and the kind of stock taking where we are. Uh, and I think it's important uh, to have this and once again thank you for having had the idea and having organized because sometimes or well, often we have many ideas but not everything of that is implemented. Uh, and this might be one of the um, most uh, important um, findings when dealing also with our neighborhood uh, that uh, often there are very good ideas but about implementation one can discuss a little bit more. But coming back to the immediate uh, um, topic, uh, first of all, uh, I think it's uh, not an accident that uh, countries, for instance, like the country I know best, this is usually uh, the, the, the way commissioners uh, speak about their home country, so in my case it's Austria, enjoy an enviable uh, lifestyle. On the whole, the countries of the EU prosper because they are places where there is great personal freedom. Freedom to start a business, even sometimes it takes some time to get all the permits and allowances, but nevertheless. Freedom to demand change, this you can do every day. Freedom to do things differently. It's about the freedom for each individual to make their own choices. Free speech and an informed professional press are essential for this kind of democratic society. They are fundamental to the choices that citizens make about the future of their country. Without them, the public cannot weigh up options or judge their leaders. Without them, dangerous prejudice and misperceptions take root, which undermine changes for peace and stability. That is why freedom of media is one of the very foundations on which our union is built. And we believe that a strong, independent press is fundamental to successful societies everywhere. <laughs> I would like to pay tribute to journalists everywhere who have uh, taken great risks to their jobs and often risks for their life. I am glad to live in a country where I believe no journalist has to, life to, to, to fear for their life. And that is uh, what we all should want. But the threats to free journalism are very complex. Media working today, both in the European Union and in the neighborhood, face major challenges. Vested interests often make it difficult for independent media to survive financially. And concentration of media ownership can undermine the diversity of messages that are necessary for a vibrant democracy, limiting the possibility for independent journalism and fostering self-censorship. The flowering of different forms of online and social media is a great contribution to our democracies and citizens' media can play an important part. However, not all sources can be read with the same degree of trust. This is why we must continue to support professional journalism and the training of journalists, as it was also an outcome of today's uh, discussions, apparently. And why we must do all, we can do increase the sophistication of our news consumers. It's more important than ever for people to have access to a variety of objective, good quality, 
and independent information. This is true for voters everywhere and perhaps even more true in countries going through an important transition. No one source of information will ever have the whole picture. So a diversity of voices is essential. Unfortunately, in many of our countries, the fundamental principle of freedom of media is being undermined by those who spread disinformation and misrepresent the facts. The principle of free speech means we must defend the right of others to say, to print and to broadcast views we don't share. But that should not hold us back from exposing this information when it appears. And it need not hold us back from pointing uh, to abuse or false propaganda when it arises, or from demanding greater transparency about the influence of certain media empires. Governments have responsibilities with regard to the overall media environment, such as guaranteeing a safe environment where different options can be expressed and ensuring that all citizens have access to factual and objective information. And civil society and media representatives have important roles to play in holding governments to account when it comes to media freedom. Today's conference clearly shows the need for close engagement of the European Union with partner countries on the issues of media freedom and development. Free and reliable media are crucial for implementing the goals of the Eastern Partnership. The countries that have chosen closer relations with the European Union have to live up to European standards in the media field. It's a challenge, no doubt, but the alternative is a weakened process of state building without democratic control, with limited scrutiny of corruption and the public opinion dangerously exposed to misinformation. Media in countries that are in the process of state building are more vulnerable to government interference and control. A controlled media is a weak media. That is why it's important that media professionals in the Eastern Partnership countries get the assistance that they need and also the protection. The European Union can use already the existing instruments at its disposal by A, supporting journalists training and helping build experience and knowledge of the European Union to encourage accurate reporting. B, establish a network of journalists already familiar with European Union matters who can exchange material and information. C, support the journalists' professional organizations to promote high standards and self-regulation and to help promote critical awareness of media issues among consumers. A word about uh, TV. In Eastern Partnership countries, more than 80% of people receive the news from TV. Here there is a crucial role for regulators who need to act with professionalism and independence. I also want to underline the importance of an independent public broadcaster. We have seen encouraging examples in this respect in Ukraine. Let me go by saying that if the public does not understand the goals of the Eastern Partnership, it will remain a project of political elites. Today's conference is also about what the media can do to communicate about the Eastern Partnership itself, not through propaganda or public relations, but through critical, determined reporting of a variety of views so that men and women in the street can make up their own minds. Free media makes your countries stronger. Where information is omitted, distorted, or falsified, democratic systems are weakened. You know far better than I the power of freedom of expression and the threats which it faces. 
Our challenge here is to harness the power and uh, to combat the threat. I assure you that the European Commission is and will remain committed to this issue. And this is why, for instance, we have provided in the past four years altogether around 70 million euro in the six eastern neighborhood uh, countries for media. And we will certainly deploy at least the same amount of money in the next couple of years. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Commissioner Hahn. Um, to conclude our today's conference, um, I think that probably uh, we will disappoint a part of media which is not presented in this room for whom the only news are bad news. So um, I think this conference was a success. And this is something uh, on which we should build our further cooperation in the media area. While closing, I would like to thank our partners um, in preparation and in running of this conference. First and foremost, that's the European Commission, the engineer, the European External Action Service, various think tanks and NGOs, all speakers and moderators, our own presidency teams, and last but not least, our interpreters, whose job today was probably the most difficult one. Thank you very much. And all participants, of course.